Today I'm going to teach you how to make the Summit Toque and I'm really excited about this new design. This is a hat that's worked flat but doesn't have a lot of gathering at the top. It's also an introduction to short rows for beginners. It's quick, it's easy, so stay tuned and I'm going to teach you how to make it. This is Pam from Wood Camper Crafts where all of my crochet patterns are inspired by nature. For all of my viewers that have been asking for written copies of my patterns, I'll make this one available in my Etsy shop. For this project, you'll need a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook, a darning needle to weave in your ends, stitch markers, and a pair of scissors. In this video, I'm using Lion Brand Scarfy Yarn. This is a bulky weight yarn. You can use this yarn or any yarn of similar weight. This is a one size fits all hat, but if you're an experienced crocheter, you can easily adjust this hat to any size that you want. If you're a beginner crocheter, the easiest way to adjust the size of the hat is changing the size of the hook or the weight of the yarn. We're gonna start by making a slip knot. So pull your yarn through and pull tight. Insert your hook. Grab the end of the yarn and pull tight. We're gonna start by chaining 37. So yarn over and pull through, that's a chain one. Yarn over and pull through, chain two. Yarn over and pull through, chain three. So I'll let you work on the chain on your own. We are chaining 37 in total, and I'll meet you back here at the end of the chain. I've completed my chain 37 and I'm ready to start row one. There's my first chain and my second chain. I'm starting in the second chain from the hook and I'm doing a slip stitch. So insert your hook, yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook to complete your slip stitch. I'm gonna pause here for a moment. I'm gonna grab a stitch marker and I'm placing the stitch marker on that first stitch I just completed. So we have our stitch marker and I'm gonna continue doing slip stitches. We're doing four in total. There's the first one. So insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through all the loops on your hook to complete your slip stitch. When you're doing the slip stitches, just make sure that you keep the yarn nice and loose. You don't want these to be tight stitches. So here's our third. And we've got one more slip stitch. Insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through all the loops on your hook to complete your slip stitch. We're gonna pause here again. We're gonna grab another stitch marker and we're gonna put it on that fourth slip stitch. I'm just gonna grab my hook and insert it. And we're gonna continue by doing single crochets for the rest of the row. So insert your hook, yarn over and pull through one loop. You have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both loops to complete your first single crochet. So there's one, here's our next single crochet. Insert your hook, yarn over and pull through one loop. You have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both loops to complete your single crochet. So I'm gonna let you work on this on your own. We're doing 32 single crochets in total, and I'll meet you at the end of the row. I have one final stitch to complete row one. So I'm doing a single crochet in that final stitch. Yarn over and pull through one loop. You have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both loops. I've completed row one. At the end of every row, I'm going to chain one and turn. We're ready to start row two. In the first stitch, we're doing a single crochet working under both loops. So insert our hook, yarn over, and pull through the stitch. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over, and pull through both loops to complete your single crochet. I'm gonna pause here and I'm going to place a stitch marker on that first stitch in the row. I'm 
and I'm going to grab my crochet hook and we're going to continue working single crochets but in the back loop only in the next 31 stitches. So there's the front loop, there's the back loop, there's the front loop, and there's the back loop. I'm going to insert my hook working in the back loop only, yarn over and pull through one loop. You've got two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both loops to complete your single crochet working in the back loop only. So there's the next stitch. You can see the front loop and there's the back loop that we're working under. And we're going to yarn over and pull through that back loop. You have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both loops. There's our next stitch and there's our front loop and our back loop that we're working under. So insert your hook under the back loop, yarn over and pull through that back loop. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both loops to complete the single crochet in the back loop only. So we're going to continue working here. You're doing single crochets working in the back loop only and we're going to do 31 in total. I'll let you work on this on your own and I'll meet you back here when you've completed all 31 single crochets in the back loop only. I've completed my single crochets working the back loop only and I'm ready to start my slip stitches. So here's my first slip stitch that I'm working in. If I look at it from the back, you wanna make sure that you're not working in these back loops here. In order to see your slip stitch, you really need to look at it from the front and you're working under these loops here that form that V. I'm going to take off my stitch marker here and I'm going to do my first slip stitch. We're going to be doing four in total. So remember, not in here, look at it from the top here, find the two loops that you're working under. So we're working under both loops not in just one loop like we were doing before. So insert your hook and then I am going to yarn over and pull through both loops on my hook to complete the slip stitch. So we've got one there. Remember, look at it from the top and you can see that V, you're working under both of those stitches. So I'm going to insert my hook. It's a little hard to do here on camera. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through all the loops on my hook to complete my slip stitch. You can see I'm leaving that nice and loose. They're hard to get into if you don't leave the yarn nice and loose when you're working. So the next one here, this is our third one working under both loops. And we are going to yarn over. And I pull the hook all the way in there because it's a little thicker and then it keeps the stitch nice and loose. That's why I'm doing that. So there's our third slip stitch. And then we've got our final one here. I'm going to take off my stitch marker. Then we're inserting our hook into that final slip stitch, yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook to complete the slip stitch and complete the row. So at the end of every row, we are going to just chain one and turn. So we're ready to start row three and we're doing four slip stitches. So find that V that you're working in, insert your hook, and we're going to yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook to complete your first slip stitch there. We're just going to pause here a moment and we're going to place our stitch marker on that first stitch in the row. And now we're gonna continue on. We're gonna do three more slip stitches. So I find starting in row two, you don't have to look at it. You can look at it from the top now. You don't have to look at it from the front so much. It's just in that first row when you're doing the slip stitches that you really almost have to look at it from the front. So yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook to complete your slip stitch. Remember, make sure they're nice and loose, these slip stitches. 
So insert your hook under both loops, yarn over, and pull through all the loops on your hook. So that's three. And we just have one more here. That's our final slip stitch. Insert your hook under both loops, yarn over, and pull through all the loops to complete your slip stitch. So we've completed four. We're going to pause here a moment and we're going to place a stitch marker on that fourth slip stitch. So I'm just going to look at it from the front here. There we go. And I'm going to place my stitch marker. And then we're going to continue on. And we're going to be doing single crochets working in the back loop only. So look at it from the top. Identify that back loop. So there's a the front loop. There's the back loop. Insert the hook. Yarn over and pull through that back loop. You have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both loops to complete the single crochet working the back loop. So there's our back loop. And we're doing single crochets working in the back loop only. We're doing 31 in total. I'll let you work on this on your own. So I'll meet you at the end of the row just before that final stitch in the row. So I've almost completed the row. I've got my final stitch here. I'm going to take my stitch marker off and we're doing a single crochet, but this time we're working under both loops. So insert your hook under both loops, yarn over and pull through the stitch. You have two loops on your hook and then yarn over and pull through both loops to complete your single crochet. At the end of every row, we're going to chain one and turn. This is our first short row. We're going to have 26 stitches in the row. We're just going to pause here a moment and we're going to go to the end of the row. So because we're only doing 26 stitches, it means we're not working in 10 of them. So there's one, two, three, four slip stitches. Now we need to count six more. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's 10 stitches that we're not working in. We're going to put our stitch marker here so we know exactly where to stop. And then we're going to go back to the beginning of the row. I'm going to grab my hook. And I'm now ready to start row four. So at the beginning of the row, we are going to do a single crochet working under both loops. So insert your hook, yarn over and pull through the stitch. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both loops to complete your single crochet. So we're going to pause here and we're going to place our stitch marker on that first stitch in the row. And we're going to continue on. We're doing Single crochet is working in the back loop only. So here's our first one. We're doing 24 single crochets. We're working in the back loop only. And I'll let you work on this on your own. And I'll meet you at the end of the row, which is just before that green stitch marker. And we'll do the final stitch of the row together. So this is our final stitch in the row. The final stitch is the stitch just before the green stitch marker. In the final stitch in the row, we're doing a single crochet, but we are working under both loops. So insert your hook, yarn over and pull through. You have two loops, yarn over and pull through both loops to complete your single crochet. At the end of every row, we're going to chain one and we're going to turn. We're ready to start row five. In the first stitch in the row, we're doing a single crochet. We don't need to put a stitch marker on here because it's very obvious where the end of the row is. So there's our first single crochet working under both loops. And now we're doing single crochets in the back loop only. We're going to be doing 24 of these in total. 
So I'm going to let you work on this on your own. You're doing single crochets, working in the back loop only. You're doing 24 in total, which means you're stopping just before that final stitch in the row. So I will meet you back here and we'll do that final stitch together. We're at the end of the row and we just have one final stitch left in the row. So we're going to take off our stitch marker and we're doing a single crochet, but this time working under both loops. So we're just going to insert our hook here, doing a single crochet. And we finish the row. At the end of every row, we are going to chain one and we're going to turn our work. We're ready to start row six. In the first stitch, we are doing a single crochet working under both loops. I'm going to pause here a moment, grab my stitch marker, and place it on that first stitch in the row. I'm going to continue on. We're doing single crochets working in the back loop only in the next 24 stitches. So here's our first single crochet working in the back loop. And we're going to do our second single crochet working in the back loop only. So I'll let you work on this on your own. Remember you're doing 24 and then I'll meet you back here and we'll finish off the row together. I'm almost at the end of my short row. So I have done my 24 single crochets working in the back loop only. I have one more stitch in that short row. You can see right here and I'm going to do a single crochet in this stitch working under both loops. So I'm at the end of that short row, but this time we're going to continue on. It's not going to be a short row. So you can see our stitch marker here from row three. We're going to take that green stitch marker off, but I'm going to hold that stitch just so I don't lose my place here and I know exactly where I'm going. I'm going to put my hook back on there and then in that stitch where that green stitch marker was, I'm going to do a single crochet working under both loops. So we have a single crochet here and then I'm going to continue the row by doing single crochets working in the back loop only in the next five. So there's one, and two, and three, and four, and five. Whoops, there we go. And now I have my stitch markers indicating where I'm starting my slip stitches. So you can see the slip stitch there and we are doing slip stitches working in the next four. So there's my first slip stitch. I'm working under both loops. Whoops, almost missed one loop. There we go. And we're doing a slip stitch. So yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. There's the first one. And then we're gonna keep going there. And there's number two. So here's number three. And the final one in the row, number four here. So I'm just gonna remove my stitch marker. And here's our final stitch in the row, a slip stitch. And we've completed row six. So at the end of every row, we are going to chain one and turn.
We're ready to start row seven. We're going to do slip stitches in the next four stitches. So here's our first slip stitch, working under both loops. So there's one. I will stop and place the stitch marker there. And we're gonna do three more. Here's our second one. And three. And our final one is four. And I'm going to pause here a moment and we will place that stitch marker on the fourth slip stitch. There we go. And I'm going to continue on now. I'm doing single crochets working in the back loop only. And I'm going to do 31 in total. So insert your hook into the back loop. Yarn over and pull through. We have two loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through both loops. So that's my first single crochet in the back loop. And here's my second. So you can work on this on your own. You're doing 31 single crochets in total working in the back loop. And I will meet you at the end of the row just before the final stitch. I'm at the end of row seven. I have one stitch left in the row. I'm going to remove my stitch marker. And we're doing a single crochet working under both loops. So insert your hook, yarn over and pull through. We have two loops, yarn over and pull through both loops. So I've completed the row. I'm going to chain one and turn. I've showed you all the rows you need to know. Now all you're doing is repeating rows two to seven until you have 67 rows in total, which includes row one. Or you can make this bigger or smaller. You can make it any size you want. So when I did it, I did the sequence 11 times. I'm going to let you work on this on your own and I'll meet you back here when you're all done. I'll show you how to finish off the toque. I finished the toque and I'm just going to quickly show you some measurements in case you're using a different yarn. So you can see I'm measuring just along the bottom here and it's 17 inches. And then if I measure kind of right in the middle there, it is 15 inches across. And then bottom to top here, you can see that it is approximately 10 inches. And then if I measure just along the top here, that's approximately eight inches. I've cut my yarn so it's about 60 inches in length and thread my needle. Now I'm going to insert my needle through that last loop and I am going to just pull tight to knot. Before I start sewing it together, I'm going to line up my edges. So I'm lining up my final row with my original chain and I'm gonna take my stitch markers. This is an easy way to hold your work in place while you're sewing. Now I'm ready to sew my toque together using the mattress stitch. So the mattress stitch, you're inserting your hook always from the inside out. So through that middle and out on the opposite side. So I'm just gonna pull through here and then inserting from the inside out on the opposite side there. So from the inside, we're working out and pull through. And then once again, going to the opposite side, working from the inside out. So this is the mattress stitch. We're gonna do this all the way along until you get to the top. So we're not gonna be closing off the toque with the mattress stitch at the top. So I'm gonna let you work on this on your own. Once you get to the top of the toque, I will show you how to close it off. I finished sewing the seam with the mattress stitch and I'm ready to close off the top. So what we're gonna do here is you can see the stitches here that almost look like a ridge, that slip stitch forms that ridge. 
So what we're going to do is we're actually going to insert our needle in between those ridges just along the top here. So we're going from front to back and then we're going to go in between the next ridge. We're going from back to front. And we're just going to keep doing this all the way along. So once again, insert your needle in between those two ridges from front to back. And then once again, in between the ridge, going from back to front. So we're going to do this all the way along until you get back to where you started from. And I will meet you back here and show you how to close off the top of your toque. We're ready now to close off the top of the toque. So I've made this mistake before, so don't you make it. Do not pull your yarn too tight because I've broken the yarn before. So just do this slowly, not pulling too tight, and you're closing off the top of the toque. So I don't want that hole there. I'm going to pull a little bit more, but I'm pulling gently there. And then once your toque is closed off, you can just hold the top here. And I'm going to take my needle and just insert it from one side to the other. And I'm just going to be forming a knot here. So I'm going to get this loop, insert my hook through the loop, and then pull tight to knot. So I usually do this twice. So I'm going to do this one more time. So from one side to the other, pull through. And then we're going to insert our hook through the loop. And we're going to pull tight to knot. So our final step here is weaving in the ends. I've already cut the yarn and I'm just going to go under a few loops in one direction and pull through. And then I'm going to go under the same loops working in the opposite direction, but I'm going to skip that first stitch that I came out of and then just start right after it and then pull through. And then once again, I'm going to do the same thing in the opposite direction. Skip that first stitch, working under the same stitches there, and pull through. So there we go. I've weaved in my end. I'm going to cut it. And we're all done. And this is what the Summit Toque looks like when it's all done. So I just wanted to thank everyone who's been watching my videos, leaving comments, and for subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. I thank you guys so much and I will be back here soon with another free crochet tutorial. Thanks for watching everyone.